Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer here for Saratech. Today I'm going to go ahead and take this sheet metal bracket and set it up to be meshed. So let's go ahead and hide some of these entities in the model because we're going to go ahead and mesh the portion of it. Then we're going to go ahead and copy that mesh to different locations using different commands. So I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, three of these four braces on the outside and hide uh, two of the, the racks that are part of the structure. It's just a sheet metal part, so let's go ahead and create a mid-surface representation of it. So geometry, mid-surface, automatic. I'm going to go ahead and select all the entities in the model. Now remember, you can hit select all because select all grabs everything regardless of visibility. And I'm just going to hit select all just to show you. So it just has uh, this list compared to if I hit select visible, which is selecting the visible entities in the model. So I can go ahead and delete these entities, and I'm just going to hit Select Visible, which will select just the entities that we are viewing right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and measure the target thickness that I'm looking for. This causes the, the mid-surface creation uh, tool to look for anything that is this value of thickness and or smaller, and it's going to create a mid-surface mid representation of them. I'm going to hide my original pieces of geometry, and now we are left with our mid-surface geometry. You notice that this um, entity over here, this brace, is made up of two individual surfaces, and both of them have a curve at this location. Now you could check that using list model curve, I'm sorry, geometry curve, and I can select here, and you'll notice that I can select twice, and there's two curves that, that make up that curve. So the way to, to, to fix this, or to make this easier on you when you're meshing, is do a geometry surface non-manifold add. So what that does is it combines this surface and this surface, whichever you select, together. And now those things share this common edge. So it's just showing you the free edges now. So if we did that same command that we did earlier, list geometry curve, and I select twice, well I can't, there's no curve, there's no curve in that location. It actually selected a curve uh, behind it. So now this is a shared edge between both of those entities. Let's do the same thing for that other pieces, the other pieces of geometry that we have here. So we can geometry, surface, non-manifold add, and that combines all these entities together. And you'll notice that in the model info tree over here. So now we got the things uh, mid-surfaced and non-manifold added. Let's go ahead and create mesh attributes. So geometry, mid-surface, assign mesh attributes. So what this does, it automatically creates properties for us based on their thicknesses. Now, one thing, it will only allow you to use one material. So all the entities are going to be made out of this one material, but it's very easy to go ahead and update them. So for instance, it created two properties, and I want these to be made out of that uh, steel material. And then I want the end, other entities to be made out of an aluminum material. So I can go ahead and update that if I wanted to. In this case, I'm going to use 6061 aluminum. Now, I'd like to create a bolted connection between these entities. And that's going to be made out of a different material. So let's go ahead and create our material well. And this I'm going to use my 1025 carbon steel. There we go. So now these entities already have their properties associative to them. So now we can go ahead and set them up to be meshed. Now just to make the mesh a little cleaner, I'm going to go ahead and throw a washer around each one of these holes. Now you can select each individual curve. You could use your dialog select. In my case, I'm just going to use the select and hold down my shift just to do a box selection, just to select all the entities in the model to create those washers. And I'm going to do the same thing for mesh surface. I'm going to apply a matte mesh and I'm going to specify a mesh size. And I'm going to hold down this, this instance, I'll hold down the control key, which will do a circle pick. And it's going ahead and meshing these entities using their mesh attributes that we defined. We're still uh, apart here, and I want to create that bolted connection. Now, this is an important part. I'm going to use a custom tools meshing hole to hole fastener. Now, in the documentation, which is available in your C drive uh, FEMAP directory, there's a PDF folder, and inside there, there is one called Custom Tools. And this one tells me you must, whichever material is active, so I can double click on this entity and it becomes active. You'll notice it becomes that bluer color, or you can right click and say active. 
the uh, beam model that it's going to create between them is going to be made out of whichever material is active. So now I can do custom tools, meshing, hold to hold fastener. So I select curves at fastener bottom. So I'll select those two curves. And it says select curves at the top. So I'm selecting those two curves. And you notice that it creates an RBE2 element on one face, the other face. And then it creates this property. They call it this API fastener between them. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for this other section as well. And now I have that created. Now it created two properties. I could combine them together. In this case, uh, we, I would do that later, but for this instance, I guess we're okay. And you'll notice that it's made of that active material, like I said, and its shape is defined by the size of that hole. So it automatically created that property uh, for us on the fly. All right, so now we have uh, this bottom section tied in. Let's go ahead and uh, take this, this entity and let's reflect it all the way to the top. Now, the reason why I had to reflect it is instead of just, you know, moving it is because this hole is not exactly in the center. So I can go ahead and reflect this entity up there. Now, to select all these elements that I want to reflect, unchecking some of these entities over here in the model info tree might make it easier. So in this instance, I want to hide things that are made out of steel or I want to hide things that are made out of this property. Either one uh, will work in this case. And I can say mesh reflect element specify the elements that I want to reflect. I'm just going to use my box select. And now it's saying how many copies do I want? I just want one. And you specify if you want to include geometry, how you want to renumber it, and if you want to change your properties or anything. In this case, we'll keep those as default. And now I need to specify a plane that I want to reflect about. So at the center of this hole is the center of my model. So I can select this point, which is snapping to a midpoint of this curve, the midpoint of this curve. In this instance, I'm going to select the same point. I could select this midpoint over here, but just to show you, I'll select this midpoint, but I will add an unit in the X direction, which will go ahead and specify the same point, but it's pushed out, and that's how I can define my three planes. I could also change my method to a, um, a, global, a global plane if I wanted. There's a bunch of different ways that we can go ahead and define this. So that should have went ahead and reflected that entity up here. And there you go. Now that has been reflected. And I want to create one for the middle section. So I can say mesh copy element. Use my box select as always. Select these entities that I want to move. And I'm going to move it along a vector. I don't need my geometry in this case. And I'll keep my numbering uh, constant. So I'm going to say go from, I'll grab the, this point up here. So point, and you'll notice that I'm making sure that it's snapping to a point. And you'll see that makes sure I'm going to those points. If you ever needed to change your snaps, it is a preference, but you can always right click in the background and you can change your your snap. So mine is smart snap, which was points, curves, that, that uh, midpoint that it showed earlier as well. Now that entity has been moved up. If I show my original geometry, you notice this entity is now um, three layers high and one thing that I would really recommend doing at this point or you could do it a little bit later but just make sure that you do this command tools check coincident nodes I can select all the entities in the model and I like to hit this preview and I like to make sure what I think that is merging makes sense so it is the the side of the RBE2 element to the elements that are existing there which makes sense in my case and I'm just going to go ahead and merge those entities. Last thing that we need to do is let's take this stand, this uh, brace here. And let's go ahead and rotate that um, all the way around uh, the structure. So I'm going to hide uh, things in my case that are made out of aluminum, which should be the middle. And I'm going to include uh, those rigid connections and uh, the beam that is between them. I guess if I turn on thickness and cross section under view style, it might make it easier to go ahead and see uh, that beam that is also included. All right. So this time our command is mesh revolve 
rotate, I'm sorry, element. So I want to rotate these elements all the way around. So I want to do this three times this time, and I want to rotate around a vector. Now, 0, 0, 0, my model is the center, so I can do rotate 0, 0, 0. Now, I'm going to point this in the z direction, and it's going to rotate based on the right-hand rule. And I want to do it every 90 degrees. You notice that my, now my posts have been, been added. I can show the rest of my model. If I hide my geometry, it will look a little cleaner. And like we showed before, we want to do a tools check coincident nodes. I'm going to select everything in the model. And we can hit this preview. And you'll notice that now the locations where we need to merge uh, make sense in our model. It's now that inside face of the RBE2 element. And make sure that works for your entire model. So hopefully this was uh, useful in setting it up. Thank you for your time. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.